So we'd said before that the government has to raise money to cover that budget. They have to bring in revenue. And we said the main way that they do that is through taxation. So what exactly is tax? Well, as you guys know, tax is just money that people have to pay to the government on a ton of different things. It might be income or profits, different transactions like a sales tax, property tax, and so much more. The government really does tax a whole lot of things. Why exactly does the government tax? Well, there's a lot of things as we talked about before in like unit three, as we talked about how public goods wouldn't be provided. Um, there's a big part of it that, you know, the government has to raise money in order to provide things like police, like fire, like the roads that we drive on, like parks. But not only that, in order for the government to function, they have to have money to do so. And so they tax the people that they are governing. And in that way, the people are technically paying for the government to function. Taxes can also be used, though, to help modify people's behavior. Um, we know this to be called a sin tax. We'll talk about those later on. But uh, sin tax is specifically like cigarettes. Uh, when we put a tax on cigarettes, make cigarettes more expensive, we're trying to keep people from buying cigarettes. Uh, but also through government programs, uh, taxes are used to help redistribute wealth. Right? We think about it in taxation that's used on things like Social Security and Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, what we're doing is we're, we're taking money and redistributing in a way that helps people out through these different government programs. Now, when it comes to bearing the burden of the tax, really, it's like who should be paying for this tax? There's kind of two major competing principles or two big ideas when it comes to it. There's one principle that's known as the benefits received principle. And it's the idea that people who are receiving benefits uh, f from the uses of those taxes should be the ones paying for it, right? Uh, probably the most um, well-known case of this is like the gas tax. Whether you know it or not, there is a tax that is placed on gas and it's used primarily to go toward roads. Well, that makes sense because the more gas you buy, the more wear and tear or the more driving you're doing, which means the more wear and tear you're doing to the roads, uh, which means, you know, you're using the roads more, you're getting more benefits from roads. And so it all, it, it all kind of plays out. But there's a couple problems that come along with this. First of all, how do we measure the benefits that people receive from those different things, right? Like if, if, my, if my money goes toward parks, how do you know how much time I'm spending at the park, right? Or, you know, I might have never had to call the, pol the police or the fire department to my, to my home uh, in order to do anything. It's like, but my tax money is paying for that. So it doesn't really play out um, in exactly the way people would like. But also the idea behind income redistribution. I mean, if you think about it, the people who need, um, need their health care paid for, they need their health pay care paid for because they can't pay for their health care. And therefore, if you're expecting them to pay more in taxes in order to pay for your health care, that kind of defeats the purpose of it all. Then there's kind of the prevailing idea that's known as the ability to pay principle. And this is the idea that taxes should be distributed based on people's income or really just their ability to pay. And that's how our federal income tax is actually set up. Um, because the more money that you make, the higher percentage of your income you have to pay. But again, we have some problems that come along with this. First of all, how do you exactly measure someone's, quote, ability? Just because somebody makes a certain amount of money, it doesn't mean that their ability is necessarily greater. You might have two people who make the exact same amount of money, but the, the cost of living might be drastically different where they live, right? And so that's hard to really measure that ability. Or maybe one person makes a certain amount of money, uh, and someone else has uh, makes the same amount of money, but they got you know seven kids. And yeah, you can write that off on your taxes, but still, how do we exactly measure that? And also, is it fair? If people work for their for their money, should they have to pay more of it just because that they are in a higher paying job? And so these are these two competing ideas that really go back and forth. But when we think about taxes as a whole, what we really do is we think about three different types of taxes, you could say, or a w different ways that taxes are are measured. And we'd say that's a proportional tax, a regressive tax, and a progressive tax. And all three of these, what they're doing is they're attempting to look at the average tax rate that someone pays. And the average tax rate is just that percentage of their income that somebody pays in taxes. So if we think about the names of these and thinking it in terms of the average tax rate, let's first look at a proportional tax. A proportional tax is just the idea that your average tax rate or that percentage you pay remains the exact same as your income increases. And so what that means is it doesn't matter how much money you make, you pay the same percentage of your income. 
and this is sometimes referred to as a flat tax as well, but we might look here, maybe all three of these people, a person making 50,000, a person making 100,000, and a person making 200,000, all pay 25% of their income in taxes. So the first person pays 12,500 in taxes, the second person pays 25,000 in taxes, and the third person pays 50,000 in taxes. Now, a lot of people look at this and they're like, listen, flat tax, proportional tax, it is fair. Everybody's paying the same percentage. But it might seem like it's fair, but those taxes weigh more heavily on the poor. Think about it. Somebody who makes $10,000 a year, they're going to feel that 25% a lot more than somebody who makes $100,000 or $1 million a year. right? So the less money you make, that percentage of your income, uh, it'll weigh a lot more heavily on you. The next one we have is a regressive tax. And as you think of regressive, you think regress or to go backwards or to go down. This means that the average tax rate decreases as your income increases. And some of you might be like, well, why in the world do we have a tax like that? You make more money and you pay less of a percentage of your, of your income. Well, if we look here, let's say we have it like this, right? The, the lower um, money you make, the higher of a percentage you pay. And so if we were to, to, to kind of put these here and we think about it, we're like, well, how and why would this ever make any sense? Well, what we end up seeing is we actually have a regressive tax that is in place uh, in the United States, and it's a sales tax. Like, think about it. The more money you make, the smaller percentage of your income that tax represents. Like, if you buy a car, and when you buy a car, regardless of how much money you make, say every, all three of those people are buying the same car, suppose they have to pay 10% sales tax on that car right? Well, everybody is still paying that same 10%. However, the less money you make, that 10% sales tax is going to represent a higher percentage of your income. And this is where we have to be really careful because proportional regressive progressive taxes, they look at the percentage of your income that you're paying. A sales tax isn't a percentage of your income you're paying. It's the percentage of the price of the item. And so that's why we end up seeing is that whatever you pay in sales tax, the less money you make, that sales tax represents a higher percentage of your income. But what we end up seeing in the United States is we have something that's known as a progressive tax system. And this means that your average tax rate increases as your income increases. And so maybe someone who makes $50,000 only pays 20%. When you make $100,000, you pay 25%. You make, you make $200,000, you pay 30%. And a lot of people look at this one and they say, yeah, that seems pretty fair. Um, this, this income tax in the United States where we call it sometimes progressive or a graduated income tax because of this ability to pay principal. The more money that you make, you have more of the ability to pay more, so you should pay more.